Hello, good morning, good morning, good day. Happy post burn to you. Uh, I'm Halcyon and this is my first broadcast since returning from the Black Rock Desert. I'm in Reno currently at the Grand Sierra Resort where I have been decompressing. And thank goodness I set aside this time to do nothing and replenish my body and mind. This was my hardest burn ever. 20 plus years, 24 visits to Black Rock Desert. And this was the one that broke me. And it's taken me a while to really understand what that meant and what, how that affected me. And, and so I'll try to explain what happened. So this was the hottest that I can remember. And heat has been my kryptonite. I don't know if it's, I think it's getting worse as I get older, but I cannot deal well with, with high temperatures and humidity. So it wasn't humid. So usually I'm like, I can deal with Burning Man. But the heat was significant. And there were these long stretches of time when I couldn't get my body temperature down. I would I'd have like frozen Gatorade bottles under my arms and I would just be you know, drinking ice water and having cold gel on my neck and, and a wet thing over me, all the, all the things. But it was hard. And then about Thursday evening, I got hit and I went down and I just got so weak and I basically couldn't leave my RV. I had air conditioning, which I could get it chilled down to like 70 at night, in the, in the middle of the night when it was as cold as possible, I could get it down to about 70. But most of the daytime, my RV, the little area that I had enclosed off to get air conditioning, I could get it to about 95. So 95 was like the, the keep cold. The rest of my RV, I had a little t temperature gauge, but it was like 117. So if I went into my RV to like get something or apply sunscreen, it was 117 degrees. Um, and I think it was a combination of dehydration and heat stroke and maybe even some food poisoning. I was constipated for several days and I was weak and I couldn't even make it to the porta potty. Luckily, I brought a bucket because I don't have a toilet. I took the toilet out of the hugmobile. And so I was, first I was constipated, then I ate a bunch of prunes. And so then I had like, like sharts for several days. So I couldn't really leave. I couldn't, I couldn't even, I was scared to even get to the medical tent. And so I, I made a note to my campmates and I said, check on Halcyon every hour with check boxes. So Cookie and others that came to my RV Every hour, what came into my RV, grabbed my hand and said, are you doing okay? What can I get you? And I'm like, bring my bucket. Can you get me some more water? You know, and, and I was scared. Like I was scared like if I got worse and people didn't check on me, and people were like, oh yeah, Halcyon, he's an he's old pro, he's fine, he's just sleeping it off or whatever. I'm like, what if I get worse and I'm just too weak to even ask for help or, or cry for help? Eventually I did get taken to the medical tent. Um, and so I had like a 36 hours where I was so laid out to the point like even like I, after resting for 24 hours straight, it was time for strike. And I, I came out to do strike as much like every, I would come out for, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. And I would, I would do, I would do my best to, to, but I couldn't do it. And I was so, I felt so guilty. And I had these thoughts. I felt, or I was like, I, I said out loud for the first time ever, I can't do this again. I've never thought that of Burning Man, as hard as it's been, I've never thought I can't do this again. And I had these thoughts in the middle of the night when I was unable to participate in strike at the, in, at the level that I expect everyone to. And I, I, I honestly was going through this thought process of like, I need to step down as camp leadership because I'm such a fraud and I am such a hypocrite. And so that dark night where I was so filled with self judgment and so weak, uh, so uncomfortable, 
it was traumatic. Like I, I realize now after getting to the other side that it was so difficult that I almost couldn't remember anything else that happened at Burning Man. And so luckily during this decompression, I have been able to think through and remember other things that happened, what happened up until Thursday. And even what happened during my challenges. And so some of those takeaways, it's like there's this trite saying, you know, you don't get the burn you want, you get the burn you need. And I think about some of the things that maybe I've asked for <laughs> over the last year, some of the growth and the lessons that I have wanted or I've been seeking out or one of which is, you know, I, I've, I've said like, I need to get more comfortable with being uncomfortable. <laughs> and there's nothing that makes me more uncomfortable than just being overheated. Some people like love being in the tropics. They love sitting on the sun. I, I bring an umbrella everywhere now because I, am, I, I get so, my, my physical sensation of being oh, oh hot and my, I generally run hot. So I got to be in that state for hours upon hour upon hour upon hour upon hour and just having to live in that state of uncomfortable. So careful what you wish for. And the other thing that is this powerful takeaway for me as I'm, as, as I'm processing now is that one of my growth edges lately has been trying to grow as a leader. And as I have been learning and studying and reading, you know, things and listening to things by Brene Brown and others, I'm, I've been wanting to be more of a leader that lifts up others to lead. And in my past, I have been a little bit more me focused in my activities. And so this process of leading Pink Heart or being a part of the leadership of Pink Heart and, and knowing that I could be better at delegating and mentoring and empowering and trying to be better and I think getting better but this experience of being incapacitated forced me to trust and witness my lieutenants and my team and the other leadership just like fucking rocket clearly doing better than I could do clearly just taking things I mean, I didn't, even before I was laid out, people were just taking care of things and didn't even tell me. Like, there were massive things that, that we, we had. There was so many struggles. The heat made things so difficult. And then just everything was difficult. Everything, things overheated, things broke. Deliveries didn't go the way they were supposed to. We had to just keep thinking of new solutions, solutions, solutions. And rarely did I even get brought into the loop. I was told after the fact, hey, this is what happened. This is how we fixed it. And I'm like, fuck yeah. And so I feel like more than I've ever done in my life, I led like, not like a leader, but like a empowerer, I guess. So I'm like, fuck dude, how crazy that this incredibly difficult experience ended up showing me how to be better. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. And so now as I'm able to like recognize, oh my gosh, this, I had a traumatic experience and I almost had like PTSD around this, this 36, 48 hours. So much so that I can't, I couldn't get my head to think of anything else. Now I'm going back and thinking, oh my gosh, I got to go to the pink ride and the pink ride was incredible. And we, the pink ride rode through the Galactivators doing improv and as they, so they improv, did their rap song about the Pink Ride and Ignatian as we went through. And the Pink Ride participants were so incredible. We had a, a meetup for the Ignatian people that have been the, the worldwide gratitude circle. We had a meetup with like 12 of us hugging in person, people around the world. Got to meet up with my coaching crew, my coaching group. Got to have lots of deep conversations with campmates. I got to like have a conversation with someone who I felt like maybe I had done them wrong and ended up having this beautiful healing conversation that like I, had, I didn't realize like I had this nugget of regret that as we fully got present and forgave and confessed and just like released with each other, we were both like, oh my God, and it just felt 
one of the highlights of my burn was just being able to have this conversation. So as I am now going back, I'm like, oh, wow, this was so fucking hard and so powerful. And isn't that, I mean, duh, this is what I say these words, you know, Burning Man is not a vacation. Burning Man is not just something you having fun in the desert. It is transformative. And why is it transformative? Because it's a, it's a cauldron. It is a, it fucking breaks you and you breaks you and then you break through and you grow into, you realize that you're bigger and you're more. You cannot gain growth and confidence without doing. And so this week, week and a half, two weeks, I was there Wednesday pre-build to, uh, to Monday. I mean, whew, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I could do it again, but I did it. I made it. I survived it. And I, I think I'm a better person. I certainly feel like I'm, I, what I, I said in one of the last talks that I gave to the campmates, I, I tried to say something after or during each meal. And I had this realization that my identity in my life and what I do with my life is blurrier now that I feel identified and proud of what my family does. The victories and the achievements and the growth of all these pink heart people, I feel like that is an extension of me and my life. Family. So I'm still processing. I'm still in Reno. I technically have a room until tomorrow morning, but I might get another night or I might see if there's someone in Reno that wants to let me crash and just like drive at night tomorrow night. Hugmobiles was not driving that great from from uh, Black Rock Desert to Reno. So I'm a little scared, so I might drive at night. So if you've left comments here, I have been f focusing on not reading them. I'll try to read later. You can send me a message if you wanna make sure that I see something that you wrote. If you are in Reno and wanna let me know, I may try to do some socializing or a meal publicly. Otherwise, I'll probably just be around the hotel. I'm just playing it by ear and trying to allow more and more to settle and, 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 and see and appreciate more of the gifts that initially were obscured because of the, the heavy darkness that, that became so thematic for the, the end of my burn. So I am so filled with love and appreciation for all the people I got to meet and hug. I, my, my, my big regret, one of the things that's, that made it so difficult is because I was, when I was laid out and the heat made it so difficult to be out at my camp or elsewhere, I didn't get a chance to meet as many people. And that's, that's usually the highlight of my year is to meet burners and people that have watched the video and then we get to connect and I get to hug and feel the, the physical vibes and hugs and eye contact and energy of people that I've connected with through these digital means. And so not being able to do that was really hard not to let go of and hard not to have regret or feel like a missed opportunity, missed. But, uh, you know, you, you, the, a burn is, is all about letting go of the way you think, think it's supposed to go and embracing the way it is loving reality. So that was my, uh, that was my, my experience. Profound and awesome, and more and more awesome the more I, I recognize it. So, uh, I'm feeling great. I feel super rejuvenated. I'm probably gonna, I've been, you know, in a, chilling in a, in a hotel and by the pool and connecting and having good food and and good conversations for the last 48 hours. So maybe one more day of this. So, uh, it was so good to see people and share charcuterie in the hotel lobby. Or we, we had a, a, there was a meat and cheese party on the 17th floor lobby that uh, friends of mine and hosted and we would pull people in from the elevator. So. I love you. Thank you for your support and understanding. And I will check back in as it makes sense to me. I'm trying to listen to my body and my mind and my spirit. But I'm so grateful. So grateful I'm okay. One of my dear friends and Pink Heart leaders, their, their trailer 
broke and their car flipped twice and on the way home and they were they're lucky to be alive so i'm i'm slowing down being grateful for the safety and lives of those i love so i love you thank you <laughs>